And today is so amazing. I got up early, went for a nice prayer walk, spent about an hour with the Lord. And on my journey, the Spirit of the Lord really began to minister to me. And what I want to do is I want to post three pictures. And what I would like for you to do is tell me what you see. I really believe one of the things that God wants to do is change a man's perspective. And so I'm going to post three pictures. And I believe the word of the Lord is in your mouth. What I want you to do is in the comments, write, tell me what it is that you see. And let's see if you see what I saw. Let's see if you heard what I heard. And I'm going to share at the end what God placed in my heart over the three pictures that I saw. So I want to challenge you to use your God perspective, see glory, see light, see victory, speak hope, speak life. No matter what we face in life, never changes the fact that life is very good. Can't wait to hear what God reveals to you when you prophesy. What a video that was. And right now the prophet is reading over some of the things that happened. Yeah, well, I mean, there's there's a Sacha Joy, there's a Sergi, there's a Irma, Esther, there's uh, Nadine Roberts, all of them gave tremendous words. Uh, Sandra Points uh, said, you know, and, and I'm just gonna read hers. She said, uh, the small gate and the narrow, the difficult uh, path to travel that leads to everlasting life, you know, and there are a few that find it. And she gave a scripture, hallelujah, when you prophesy and you attach a scripture to it, it makes it a sure word of prophecy. Excellent job. And then she said, the second picture is the harvest. Indeed, it is plentiful, but the workers are few. I want to let you know that that's the exact scripture and verse that I had. So I wanted to highlight that to you because that's what I felt in my spirit. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It was a seed. It was a field that had an opportunity to be fruitful. And that's what God was ministering to me personally there. And the third one you said, um, I will compensate you for the years, and I don't have the rest of it because, uh, for some reason, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a screenshot, a so it's a picture. So, but that was right on the money. So I'm so blessed by by that. You know, um, there is there is another person that gave a word that that really blessed me. Uh, I want to say it was Mikey. Hey everybody, this is Miss Juanita. I wanted to invite you to join me for Let's Worship with me, Miss Juanita. It is a time of worship, a time of prayer, maybe a little bit of prophesying, but it's always an enjoyable time of praise and worship unto our God. Join me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. for Let's Worship with Miss Juanita. I'll see you there. Okay, cut. Mikey, I finally found his, his really resonated with me. He said, he said, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying Isaiah 43, 19 in the three pictures. I'm about to do a new thing and it will spring forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and in the rivers in the desert uh, and wilderness and rivers in the desert. That's one of the scriptures that I also had, you know, because God has a way of leading us out of dry places and spaces into a fruitful place. And he was announcing what I felt that God was doing something new. The other picture that resonated with me was, was the one with the it looks like the whole, it's a, I don't have the picture before me, so it's the one that had a trail going over it and then the, it looks like it's a tunnel. And one of the things that God said to me, it doesn't matter what pathway you take, he said, I'm gonna bring you to the other side. So if you look mm. the tunnel underneath, it's, it's a high road and a low road. And God says, I'm gonna bring you to the other side. And sometimes if you look at that, you'll see it looks like kind of a wall or a barrier. But I was hearing the Lord say, I'm a way maker and I will take you through. I will bring you to the other side. Nothing can stop what I promise. And then the one with the wall, in the marsh, what God told me is, he said, I am the God of the Hebrews, you know, and most people talk about the water here, but most people didn't see the bridge. And the reason I did that was when I took the picture, being the photographer, I wanted, I knew that if I highlighted the water, 
that most people would focus on that. But I was really trying to see who could see the bridge. And so the word Hebrew means to cross over. And so what God told me is, he said, it doesn't matter how deep it is. It doesn't matter how marshy it may be or appear. He said, if I made a way for the children to get out of the wilderness, I will cross you over. So there's people that need to know that there is a bridge there and that bridge always speaks of a time of crossing over. Are you looking for direction? Do you need a prophetic word? Join us. August the 25th through the 28th, Revival of the Desert. An outpouring is taking place. We'll see you there. Well, let me throw these at Jeffrey. Did you see them? If not, I'll show them to you. Maybe we can see what you see. What was, if you just look at that picture, this is the one of the empty field. Yeah, I see the harvest. That it's, it needs to be developed. It's a dry season as well. Um, that's, that's first what comes to mind is the, the brush that's down. I think of the harvest field. Yep. And I think of the laborers that are needed. Um, but then I also see a land that is needing of like a downpour. Is needing a watering yep. in the land. Good. Like we're in the brink of, we, you know, we've been saying it, we're the brink of revival. I feel that in the spirit, like we're toes are on the edge of something significant. And even this morning, and it relates to what the Lord spoke to me this morning, I got up and had a time of prayer and I was just praying outside and it's just, it's hot here. You know, if you <laughs> don't know anything again. about their set, it's like 107. I'm not it's originally from here. here, but yeah, it was, it was hot. And then all of a sudden, I'm out there praying and it just begins to lightly rain on me this morning. And I just felt like the land is thirsty. And mm -hmm. when I see that picture, I feel like the, the, the land is thirsty for an outpouring. Come on. And here's, here's the one I was just talking about this picture too. Yeah, the bridge, I think of crossing over to the other side. But immediately when I see this picture, what I think about is a, is a reed. I think of, uh, you know, Jesus being the reed that, you know, can bend but not be broken. Um, I think of he is also a place of refreshing. Um, you know, th that's with the stream. There was many people that use that as, as a type of refreshing on some of the comments. So awesome. they see it too. So absolutely. Yeah, I think of the reed and then the bridge going over. He is the way. Yes. You know. And then this was the last one. Yeah. So... Immediately when I saw that, I, I was like, I thought it was a parking garage. <laughs> but then now that I see it with higher definition and clarity of this retina screen of, of the iPad, I see that there is a path through it. But I think, you know, even in that, in hearing God's voice, sometimes we think it's accidental. But in that, God can speak to you. So I immediately, when I saw it from a distance, I saw a parking garage. And that speaks to me because sometimes we feel like we're in the parking garage of life and we're just waiting like, OK, God, when can I go? When can I go? And at the right time, you can pass on through. And there was an, actually another way to get out of that. So Absolutely. you go in one way. You come out another. And you come out another. I love it. I love it. I love it. Go in one way, come out another. That's, a, that's what God does. He makes a way. He's a way maker. You know, let me ask this. If you enjoyed that you know, that opportunity to share what God's speaking to you prophetically, you know, let us know in the comments because I go on walks about almost three times a week. I'm always somewhere doing something and I see all kinds of pictures. Matter of fact, on that walk, I took another one. Maybe I'll post it at a later time, maybe later this week, I'm not quite sure, or go take a couple more and do it again because I'm a firm believer that if I, if I post something, it's an opportunity for you to share. And I love it. I read through everybody's comments. I wanna let you know, every one of you are right because God was speaking to you in that moment. That picture was speaking to you and you were sharing what God said. And that is, my friend, powerful. That's what this ministry is all about, championing others to not be afraid. So if we create an opportunity for you to share a word, and post it online. If that's something you're interested in doing and doing more of, right here on Everything Prophetic, that's what we're gonna do because this show is about the people. It's about everything we can do to help you grow in your gift. Sparks, Nevada, get ready for the 
Reno release. The word of the Lord is in my mouth. I'm ready to prophesy. God's going to release mantles, presence, goodness, glory. He's going to release miracles. Look forward to seeing you there this Sunday. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're we going to... got one more thing to do, though. Oh, what is we that got one? one more. I was about to, I was <laughs> about to, no, you can't piece it out yet. <laughs> we got one more thing. What is it? Dude, what did we launch today? Oh, my, my goodness. Come on, we got to talk about why in the world did you write a book to just decide one day a year later, I'm just going to start giving it away. Yes, sir. Well, I really believe that the reason why that book is written is the book is written because... I'm a firm believer that one word can change a man or a woman's life. And so my great desire is that if people could learn how to give a word, they'll be more apt to do it. And if they could do it in confidence, that word will change somebody's life. So, yep, we posted it. Go to www.profitrobbook.com. Dot com. If you go to that, click the link for the price of shipping. We'll send you that book, and you can you can learn all about the prophetic. Discover your prophetic voice, so you can learn to reveal God to others as He makes His voice known to you. I I just can't wait to see how many people will read it, how many people will love it, how many will enjoy it. And of course, there's going to be people that don't like it, and that's okay. You know. I'm not everybody's cup of tea, you know, but guess what? I am one that's willing to take a risk. I am willing to put it out there. So it's easy to criticize, but are you willing to do the work? So and there's a couple more things on there. If you get the book, these are yep. exclusive situations. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I want to just mention it and maybe maybe next week we'll we'll talk a little bit about it. Okay. But there's an opportunity there yep. for people that get the book to be able to get a counseling session, a yes. prophetic counseling session, or an opportunity to have a dream interpreted interpreted in detail. Yeah. And the counseling could be on the phone. And so can the dream one. So Absolutely. talk a little bit about it. Just briefly talk about what is prophetic counseling. I mean, we know what the therapy is and the sit on the couch <laughs> and you, you tell all the horrible things that happen to you in life. Yeah. Well, just to, to let people know that, you know, if you go through that, if you go through that uh, place where you subscribe for the free book, you know, it'll, it'll present an opportunity for you to have an opportunity to spend anywhere from 40, 40 to 60 minutes with me on the phone so we could talk about certain areas of your life. And then the, the belief is as we conversate, I will hear from heaven and help discern what your dream is and help put a language to it so you could find answers to certain things that you've been questioning. So it's like I will come and be your personal coach for about an hour's worth of time and help people grow in their gifting. Some people are going to love it. Others are going to hate it. It's okay. You know, um, I tell people this all the time. You know, when we go to a doctor, we go there what? looking for answers. When you come to a prophetic voice, you're looking for answers. Their answers don't come from the school of medicine. It doesn't come from, from the training of, of, of a doctor of this world. It comes from the God of the heavens, and we want to impart that into your life. And so that's what that is all about. But mostly it's because I believe that that book can encourage and change and transform someone's life. And if you become a word, you can become a transformer. So that's the whole reason why we wrote the book, to change lives. So I pray that as you read it and experience it, that you would become a life changer. Discovering and releasing your prophetic voice is a 20 year journey of my life. It's a chronicle from my birth to what God is currently doing now. It's filled with testimonies of life, words of hope, and stories that are miraculous. If you're looking to be encouraged and strengthened and you want to learn more about hearing and releasing and demonstrating God's prophetic word, pick up this book and allow it to bring an impartation and activate the Holy Spirit in you so you can prophesy, bringing words of encouragement to those around.
want to take this time to encourage some and strengthen others with God's prophetic word. And you're on Instagram. This is what I heard the Lord say. I have filled you with my grace and my sovereignty. And if you would speak my word to your mountain, it will move because it's activated by the voice. Can I pray for you? Father, I command her upper and her lower back to come into alignment. Come on, let's walk. What do you notice? Will you share with us what did God do? Oh, he healed me. He What's up, everybody? Welcome to What the Heavens Are Saying. I want to take this time to encourage some and strengthen others with God's prophetic word. Before we take off and release the now word of the Lord, why don't you do us a favor? Smash that like button, share the stream, invite your friends and family to partner here with us at LIVG Ministries to change the world. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready to pass it in just a moment to a young lady by the name of Miss Linnea. She is a songbird, a carrier of glory. She has a tremendous sound that comes out of her spirit. Can't wait to hear her worship. But what I want you to do, I want you to begin to prepare your heart to hear. I believe this young eagle is going to stand from the platform and share prophetic revelation, prophetic words, and then later he and I and maybe others might be tag teaming and prophesying. Tonight is going to be a dynamic night of prophecy. So position your heart to hear. And later in a few moments, you'll hear a young man. His name is Manny Borja, uh, Borja Jr. He is a carrier of glory. He has a ministry called Fierce Love. And so I want you to get excited to hear what God is going to announce. So if you're ready to worship, Miss Linnea, will you bless us with the sound of heaven? Yes, I will. It's so good to be with you tonight, and I just, I just look forward to what God is going to do. And I just pray that you are expectant. You are expectant for God to speak to you, for God to move in your life wherever you are listening from, whether you're here in this room or watching at home. God is going to move tonight. And so just begin to call on him, begin to worship him, begin to praise him, begin to thank him, and just turn your attention to him because he loves you and he has something for you tonight. So let's sing. Let's worship, let's stand, let's lift our hands and give God our all tonight. There's only one word that comes to
you're so worthy, Lord. You're so holy. You can have our hearts, God. You can have our hearts, God. Yes, Lord, we give you our hearts right now, Jesus, and we just worship you, Lord. Yeah. One more time, let's sing. surrender this time to you, Lord. God, work within our hearts right now, Lord, and we just give you all of us in this moment. Be glorified. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. There's a Stacy Campbell. I think she was watching from Tennessee. And this is what I heard the Lord say. It's time to, it's time to do the two-step, the country hoedown. I heard the Spirit of God say, this is a time, like Dorothy, she clicked her boots, and it's time to see yourself in another place. This is what I keep hearing the Lord say. It's your time to dance yourself into a new season. It's time to let the Spirit of praise rise up and conquer everything that has been set before you. Stacy. I hear the Lord saying, your worship, your praise, your expression is going to be the Lord of your breakthrough. He is gonna go before you as the spear, as the point of it, and he is gonna pierce through everything that has withstood you. You are stepping into a brand new time. So set your heart to rejoice and see the Lord break you through into your next season. Come on, somebody put your hands together. I'm telling you, I'm super excited for everything that God's going to do in this hour. I want to welcome those that are on Facebook, YouTube, as well as Instagram. I'm telling you, there is an atmosphere to prophesy. There is a bless, bliss, Mua33, you're on Instagram, and this is what I heard. This is going to be the blessed season of your life. I'm going to give you the power to put your hand on a thing, and what you touch, I'm going to cause it to come into increase, to favor, and blessing. This is a set season where I am stirring you up. I'm expanding your tent, and I'm saying dream and dream big. Don't let, don't let go of the things that I have promised. Don't let go of the things that I've declared unto you, for they will ring true. I will deposit in you faith to conquer. The Lord says, be of good cheer for everywhere the sole of your foot tread in this next season, I'm giving to you. It is your breakthrough moment. It's an appointed time of destiny. Rise up, be strong, and see the fruit of the land manifest. Come on, somebody put your hands together. I'm, like I said, I'm really excited. Why don't you do me a favor right now? Somehow I got a call on my watch. Anyways... If you didn't hear, this is what they were saying. There is a severe blood shortage and they need blood. That was Vital. <laughs> they were asking me, I am a constant donor. They're saying I need to get in as soon as possible. Anyway, so if you're a, a blood donor, get in. Let's save lives. The lives of the life, the blood of Jesus in you can save the life of someone. So come on, that was an accident. God's letting us know that our blood has the power to heal. His blood through us. Your blood is full of miraculous power. So anyways, what I want to do is, why don't you do us a favor? Sow that digital seed, share the stream, invite your friends and family to partner once again with us here at LIVG Ministries to change the world. What I also would like to ask is let me know what city, what state, what nation you are logging in from. And for many new visitors, we want to welcome you to What the Heavens Are Saying. This is our live broadcast where you make a difference. So I want you to begin to prepare your hearts because in the next moment, I'm going to begin to bring up a young man. He's a young lion, a carrier of glory. His ministry is called Fierce Love. And what they, they do is they have a passion for the nations. They have a desire to see the lives of people change. Most of all, they prophesy, they lay hands, they, they minister to the sick and those that are in need, and they're seeing miracles all over the place. And so today, why don't you put your hands together as Manny Borgia comes up here to share and revelate and release the word of the Lord. Will you bless us? Say thank you to the man of God, Prophet Rob Sanchez. And uh, Miss Juanita. The Bible says to show is due. And uh, to show double honor to see the church. And Prophet Rob Sanchez, even though he is a prophet, he is an overseer of many. And uh, he's, he's been a blessing uh, to our lives, to our ministry. And this little speaker thing is kind of doing it. I could do the mic. Should we do the mic? Is that okay? We thank you for your patience. If you are on Instagram, can you guys hear me okay? All right, right on. Back is off. 
All right, let's just go ahead and, and say one more prayer because I need some prayer right now as well. If you guys want to stretch your hands towards me online, if you're here in person, just, Father, I pray right now that you would use me for every person, God, that you would use your words. It would be your tone. It would be a message from heaven. It would be timely and it would be efficient and effective, God, that you would move people from where they are right now into that next space, that next season where you have declared goodness over their life. And we thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you for your grace your love, your mercy, your forgiveness, God. We cleanse the atmosphere right now all over the internet, wherever they may be, and we thank you, Jesus, for you are good. Amen. As I said before, I'm very thankful, Prophet Rob. Your ministry has been a tremendous blessing to us. Uh, partly of why I'm here today is because of the words you have spoke over us. And so I just want to encourage everybody who's watching online, if you're from Fierce Love Ministries or you're viewing just for the first time, to be sure to stay connected to Prophet Rob Sanchez because you never know when he's going to release the word of the Lord over your life. Amen. And uh, I believe we have Pastor Rudy here as well, who is Prophet Rob's uh, brother and pastor. So we just want to honor you as well. But I'm just going to go right into the word. Is that okay? I got about 10 to 15 minutes to unpack this really quickly. God has dropped a word on my heart and my spirit for you guys. I don't think this uh, is going to be on the screen, but if you want to go with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version, and I come to you as a messenger of Christ today, a messenger, because we can teach, we can study, we can learn, and that all might happen, but I believe God has a message for you. Hebrews chapter 12, and it says this, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're going to flip to Hebrews 10 really quickly, and we're going to go 10 verse 35, and it says this, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Amen. If I could title this message really quickly, it would be Enduring Faith. Enduring Faith. And I'm just going to flow here with my lovely partner, Linnea, who's also my girlfriend. And uh, so if you're watching, she's not single. And uh, that's okay. Pray for yours. God is good. I, I want to talk to you guys about endurance. Because oftentimes we talk about faith very often. Faith. It is by faith we've obtained the promises that, that the characters of the, of the Bible have obtained the promises. They did so many great things by faith. And then we read in James that faith without works is dead. And is, it is by what we do and the acts of faith that prove what we believe. We, we read about those things and, and then we believe so much in our heart. But sometimes we forget that the Bible talks about the thing in between the thing God promised and said and the manifestation of it. How many of you have ever received a promise from God, a prophetic word, a dream, a vision, something that God has spoken to you, and sometimes we begin to pray, and we start to pray and act like we want it more than God does when he's the one that gave it to us in the first place. And the reason why is because the thing that he showed us is ultimately a good, prosperous destiny. It's ultimately to impact the world for Jesus. But what happens in the process of receiving that word and seeing the manifestation is we start to experience trials and tribulations and the bible talks about the testing of our faith james says count it all joy brothers and sisters when you experience various trials and tribulations knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience but let it have its perfect work why so that we may be complete and perfect lacking nothing which means to be mature See, the reason why God has instilled endurance in the in-between is because he's not just so interested in getting you to where he's called you, but he's interested in your character development. We cannot develop character without endurance. I was in Cabo the other weekend, and I was hiking up a mountain, and I noticed that I really was getting tired the higher I went. The longer I went, I started getting tired. But I also started realizing that 
I'm almost at the top right just when I felt like giving up. Prophetically right now, I'm speaking to many of you who are watching and you feel tired and you are ready to give up. But God is saying, if you just hang on a little bit longer. If you just understand that this endurance was necessary, because when you get to the top, you are going to be a man or woman of God filled with his spirit and his character. Because it's not just about getting to the top, but it's staying there with God. The Bible says that your gift will make room for you. And I hear many men and women of God say, but your character keeps you in the room. God is interested in the fruit that we produce in our life. He's not just interested in the prophetic gifting, Prophet Rob. He's not just interested in the worship or the preaching that we're able to do or the acts of service that we're able to do. Those are all good. We should desire. But God is interested in developing us into the image of his son. Aren't you glad that he says, in this process, you're not alone. You're not alone. In the midst of endurance, you are not alone. We have to look to Jesus as in Hebrews 12 it says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured. That word endured means to literally, it it means to suffer something painful or difficult, to undergo that patiently. And I'm here to declare to you right now that suffering isn't all the gospel, but it is a part of the gospel because without the suffering of Christ, Without that suffering, without that great price that was paid, without the crucifixion, you and I would not be considered children of God today. And without the suffering and the endurance that's needed in your life and in my life, we would not be able to impact and reach the world for Jesus. We share in his suffering so that we may share in his glory. And I'm just here to remind you right now that God is saying, if you just continue to sit in that suffering and pain, it won't stay. You just keep standing your ground. You keep marching forward. You keep climbing those mountains with God. And he's going to meet you. But I really love this because he wanted me to tell you this today. He said, sometimes my people forget that my spirit is in them. When you say, God, how am I going to do it? I can't climb this mountain anymore. I can't overcome anymore. I can't withstand this trial or this tribulation anymore. And he says, perfect. Because it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Don't you understand when you are at the verge of giving up? The Bible says when you are weak, he is strong. We magnify and worship God, not because of what we can do, church, but because of what he's able to do through people like you and me. I worship Jesus, not because of who I am, but because of who he is. And there's such a distance between God and me, yet he says, I love you enough to come and fill you and bring you into that space where you're seated in heavenly places with me. And so as I close this message, because we're going to begin to prophesy, I want to remind you right now that that word, that promise, that that vision, that dream, you're going to need endurance. So type right now in the comment section, say, I will endure. Say, I will endure. Because whether or not you want to believe it, church, whether you think that's a part of the process or not, guess what? It is. If you just walk with God a little bit longer, life will come to squeeze you and it'll drive you either to your knees or away from God. But I promise you this, no matter which one you are, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Say, I will endure. And if you're uh, on Facebook or YouTube, I, I believe Prophet Rob, this is about the time right now that we begin to prophesy to some people. I see a, a Helen Butler, funny because She's on YouTube, and Helen's actually my mother's name. And so I want to say to you, Helen, right now, that God is in the midst of your pain, that he sees your heart and your longing. He's even revealing to me that you even have kids right now that you're praying for. And God says that salvation will visit your home. 
And I thank you, God, for Helen right now. We just lift her up in prayer. If everybody just wants to pray for Helen right now. Father, we come into agreement with those prayers that have been longstanding, Lord. We thank you for the endurance that she's had and the strength that she has had. God, we thank you that you come behind her and in her and through her to fulfill all that you've called her to do in her life. In Jesus' mighty name. God, we thank you. Prophet Rob, you want to join me up here? Hallelujah. What a word. How many of you know that when God speaks a word, it is truth? And the Bible says, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. I love it because other translation says, make you free. Do you realize that many times people will hurt their back and they have to go through a moment of what? And a chiropractor adjustment. It hurts for a little while longer before it feels better. Right now, I saw a lady by the name of Yvonne. She is listening on uh, YouTube. And this is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. You are actually in your crystalline season. You are like a uh, butterfly in transformation. You are transforming from a caterpillar into a butterfly. But this is a season that you have to fight through your pain, your difficulty. You have to fight through these things that you feel like you're stuck in. The Spirit of the Lord says to struggle is not a bad thing. It means to fight to live. And I heard the Spirit of God say to tell you that your fight is about to bring forth a new life. When a butterfly comes out of its chrysalis, it begins to be a pollinator, one that flies from flower to flower. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say this next season, you won't be on bottom because you will be on top. For I have called you to be the head and not the tail. I've called you to prosper and to stand strong. And I have declared today is the day of victory. Let the Spirit of praise rise up and you will see every shackle and pain fall off of you. The Lord says quit looking at your suffering and look at your blessing and when you look upon the blessing you will see where great strength comes from your help comes from the hill of the Lord so look up and turn your eye towards the heavens and you will find your greatest victory says the spirit of the Lord I bless you you got one I'm seeing Blanca right now on on I believe Facebook and the Lord is speaking to me about something about concerning your relationship and that you have been praying uh, for this relationship, I believe it is your counterpart or your future counterpart or letting go of something to obtain something that he has for you. As a matter of fact, that's what I do see. I see right now that God is holding out his hand and he's saying, before I give you what's in my other hand, I need to take your hand away from the thing that's holding you captive and in bondage right now. And so I just declare to you right now, supernaturally, that God would give you the courage and the strength to remove yourself, to lay aside every weight, everything that hinders you from receiving the good thing that God has for you in this next season. Praise God. Hallelujah. I see, I see there is an Amber Montgomery, and this is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. I have put a good spirit within you. You're a voice of encouragement. You are the word of the Lord. You carry a presence that has the power to break people free. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to announce to you that I'm expanding your tent and bringing a, a greater glory to the radius. The scripture that comes to me is found in Acts chapter 5. When Peter walked down the street, his shadow was cast upon a people and they were healed. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, I am going to use you as a presence that will bring ease to someone's pain. You will end their discomfort. You will speak a word and it will drip from your mouth like honey and it will be good to them. Their countenance will brighten. Their heart will be healed and strength will be added. The Lord says, don't let this season uh, lie to you, but begin to declare that this is the season of favor and the season of blessing. And you will see the spirit of God move in by and through you, bringing life, liberty, and joy to those that are in need. You are a shade tree, says the spirit of the Lord. All right, there is a Cindy Slate uh, from Missouri. Cindy, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He says, my grace is sufficient. He says, I've heard your cry and I've seen your prayers. They have come before me as an alm. And I heard the Lord say, I have taken in that in which you have sent up and I'm breathing life upon those dry bones. That in which you've been praying for that is seemingly dead will rise up and become an exceeding great army. For the Lord says, come into agreement with what I'm saying. And Cindy, you will begin to see the move of the Spirit. You will sense the move of God. But most of all, you'll see the breakthrough that I have declared. The Lord says, I set it in motion. Rejoice, 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 for a new day has come. I'm telling you, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. The Spirit of God is here, and what He wants to do is He wants to encourage. There's a, there is a, a Sandra Zick, 
I can't see your last name, Koss, Sandra Zick. This is what I hear the Spirit of God saying. For surely my goodness and mercy weighs upon you. He says, in this season, you're going to sense my goodness causing you to bow down. He says, I'm calling you to the altar. I'm calling you to your knees. I'm calling you to a new realm of prayer. And he says, as you would bend your knee and lift up your hand, he said, my goodness will fill your mouth and my mercy will fill your heart. And when you open your mouth, you will declare good things. You will declare words of victory, words of hope, words of love into those that are around you that are struggling. God says you are going to begin to influence those that are filled with negativity and you're going to influence them with the word of the Lord. God says I have filled your mouth with the power of life. You are a life-giving spirit. You are a word that brings hope. You are one who restores joy. God says this is your hour to fountain and be not afraid for those who come into the water will be set free for surely I've anointed you for this very purpose. Be one that sets people free by the words that I've placed in your mouth says the spirit of the Lord matter of fact this is what I hear the spirit of the Lord saying not only have I given you the power to endure I've given you the power to rise up the Lord says you are not defeated he says you are the overcomers you are the mighty you are not the weak you are the strong this is your appointed time of victory the Lord says I come and I breathe upon you and I give you strength the Lord says remember even as Paul said uh, even as Paul declared that these were but light afflictions the Lord says look again about the look again again on your sufferings and declare unto yourself that this is a light thing and I will add a supernatural strength and your words will give you hope and as you prophesy you will begin to see your mountain move the Lord says this is the hour in which you begin to declare a thing and I will establish it this is your set time to believe and as you believe you will feel the witness of God rise up and you will see my spirit go forth and slay the enemy the enemy that has been before you I'm gonna lay at your knees the Lord says I will I will give you the head like I did to David and I will give to you a great victory this is your moment to rise up this is your moment to decree and to declare this is your moment to move forward and take the land if you're ready to take some land why don't you give God a shout of praise it's our moment I see a Rakesh a Rasheka on YouTube I believe it is and the Spirit of the Lord gave me this scripture for you Ecclesiastes 4 12 and he says, if, and if one prevail against him or her, two shall withstand him or her. And a three-strand cord is not quickly broken. And, and this is what God is saying. I, I saw business endeavors in your life. And that he's sending two people to come into agreement with you. And that you should trust these people to go with you and to build and establish. And so I just say, I just speak right now. Faith and courage over you and trust and healing in those broken come places. On. Because you're going to need two people because the, the Lord is calling you to a great work. You can't do this on your own. There is power in agreement. And where two or more are gathered, there he is in the midst. And so we just speak that over you right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There is a Julian M. Julian. Julian, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. This is an appointed time in which I will go before you as the way maker. Everything is stood up as an obstacle, but it's about to fall before you. This is your appointed season to advance, for nothing will keep you. For have I not said unto you, rise up and be strong? Have I not said that this is your season to take the land? The Lord says, my word is in your spirit and my promise is in your heart. Let the promises of God be yes and amen in my son and advance. As you move forward, you will see everything that weighed against you fall off. There is no more restraints for I have cast them off that you might ascend to a high place and see from above. This is your appointed time of victory. Julian, it's time to look again. You're not looking up the mountain. You're looking from above it. The Lord says you won't see the trouble. The trouble will be beneath you. Even as it was with Jacob, so shall it be with you. For I have created a ascending place for you. As Jacob dreamt a dream, he saw a ladder and he saw me above it. The Lord says the only thing above you in this season is me and I am over you and I am for you. He said, I am bringing an end to your trouble and I'm bringing forth your joy. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Advance, take your land and conquer and prosper for surely I am with you, says the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a uh, uh, Ellis Gonzalez. 
Uh, Ellis, this is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. He said, look again for every battle that has been around you. Have I not given you the power to endure? The Lord says, does it not feel like you were Peter walking on the water, but suddenly you felt like you were sinking? The Lord says, not so. I've heard your crying with your hands stretched out. I have lifted you up. But the Lord says, where your place now is not the end. I'm going to place you in a greater place and a greater space, and I'm for you. God says, it's your time to dream for your own, and I'll give it to you. It's time to believe, and as you believe, I will unfold it and put it in your hand. The Lord says you're able. Don't doubt. Don't disbelieve, but believe and watch everything turn in your favor. I saw dominoes beginning to fall and I heard the Lord say, hear the sound of favor. It's clicking on your behalf. When dominoes fall, they make a sound. And I heard the Lord say, hear the sound of the ticking. It's the sound of the blessing. It's the sound of advancement. It's the sound of you conquering and coming into the season that I have destined. Rejoice, 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 says the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is so many people that are jumping online. Jen Salazar. Uh, Jen Salazar. This is what I hear the Spirit of God say. My goodness and mercy, they are with you. But this is an appointed season where the hand of the Lord throws you forward. I don't know if you like Frisbees, but this is what I saw. I saw God take a small Frisbee disc and he turned it a circle and he threw you. Can I tell you what he said? He says, your worship will cause you to launch. He says, if you would worship me, my mouth would open not only to you, but through you. And it would launch you into new places and spaces. Jen, this is the appointed time to see the victory of the Lord. He says, this is your season of dancing. Do you not understand, says the Lord, that when you twirl, when you dance, it's a sound that comes into connection with heaven. And God says from heaven, I am declaring that this is your appointed season of victory. I'm releasing you forward. Even as a man would throw a disc, I'm throwing you, I'm launching you, I'm propelling you into a new place and space. Rejoice, for surely I am with you, says the spirit of the the Lord. So even, if, even if you want, you can move in healing, whatever you feel. I, I do feel, I have a word of knowledge right now. There's this general sense right now that some things have been very difficult to endure. Somebody who was watching that message and you were saying, that was for me, that was timely. You don't know how much you can take. But the biggest question in your heart is this, when, when life hits you so hard, you wonder, does God even love you? And that, that's a serious one to address. And so I want you to raise your hand in the chat. If this pertains to you, it could pertain to more than one person. But we are going to move in healing right now for the heart. Because God is saying, I do love you. That is why I'm allowing you to go through this. Because we talked about in order to get where you need to be, you need to endure. You need Come to on. endure. So God has a faithful promise that he wants to manifest in your life, but he needs you to endure. And so he's saying, I do love you. You can't see it all yet, but you will see it. You will look back and say, now I know that those afflictions, that those trials and those tribulations were God's protection over my future. He was shaping you and molding you so that you can stay in the place of goodness. So right now, Father, we pray for every hand that's raised. Yes. Lord, for every person that has questioned your love, God, that you would come like a mighty rushing wind right now where they are, that you would warm their heart, Lord, that you would give them a manifestation and experience right now that would remind them that you are so close, you are so near, that you have never left them, but that you are strengthening them, strengthening them for what is ahead. So we pray for healing and restoration in their heart, that they would be driven back to their knees, back to that secret place to be in worship and in intimacy with you, God. Lord, we thank you for the, the endurance that you've given us. We thank you, Jesus, that you never less left us. Amen. There's a Betty, Betty uh, Marillo. You are on uh, YouTube. And this is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. Betty, you are a voice of joy. There is something about you that when it walks into the room, you don't walk in silently. You make a joyful noise. God says, I have created you, dear, to be a sound, a sound of heaven, a sound of victory, a sound of laughter, which is medicine to the soul. You are a sound that causes things to be stirred up. The Lord says, I have made you like a rock being thrown upon still waters to cause a ripple effect. God says, daughter, it is your appointed time to bring a ripple effect. It's your appointed time to cause things to be stirred 
stirred up. He says, stir it up with your joy. He says, the joy of the Lord is strength. You will add strength unto those that are weak. You will add joy unto those that are hurting. You will be medicine to the soul and you'll cause those around you to rejoice. The Lord says, this is the season to push back uh, things that you don't like to tolerate. Sadness, anger, violence, frustration, disappointment, bitterness. These things that weigh atmospheres down, I will put you in the midst of it and I'll cause you to break it free. God says, I have made you like it says in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, starting in verse 19. And Elisha said, bring me a new bowl, put salt in it. And he went to the source of the problem. God says, I'm going to use you as one who goes to the source. I am going to cast you into some places that seem difficult, that seem bitter, that seem that seem uh, troubled. And when you get dropped into it, the Lord says the water will be healed and made sweet. The Lord says what you carry, Betty, will bring sweetness to that in which is sour. It will bring an end to that in which is fruitless and make it fruitful. For you're a carrier of glory, says the Spirit of the Lord. I'm telling you today, there is an atmosphere of breakthrough. If you are in a time of trouble, matter of fact, there is those that are fighting sickness, those in kidneys and livers and bladders. There is those that are fighting uh, with tumors. Somebody got a report that they have a tumor on your neck and I saw the hand of the Lord grab it and I saw it begin to dissolve. I just speak to that tumor on that, that person's neck and throat area and I command it to dissolve, dissolve. I pull it down by the word of the Lord. I command there is somebody that is struggling with their bladder. There is somebody struggling with their kidneys and I just release healing. There is somebody that needs to pass a kidney stone and I heard the Lord say it feels like you're in labor but the Lord says this thing is going to end and I'm going to burst something new inside of you he says I am going to birth the joy even in the midst of your pain I'm going to cause you to rejoice and as you begin to rejoice the pain that your body was experiencing will be no more the Lord says let the spirit of God arise and see every enemy scatter for this is the appointed time of the Lord to worship this is the appointed time of the Lord to declare and to decree and watch greater things manifest for surely I am with you says the spirit of the sovereign lord even if you get somebody in the audience we can pull them out so i'm just getting more uh, words of knowledge and right now the lord is, is saying to to so many of us right now that you've been it's literally that they've been down they've been out they can't seem to keep going and you need to right now prophetically get up off your seat out of your seat get up off the ground right now Come on. and walk around the room and declare the goodness of God and declare that everything he has promised you will come to pass. No more weak prayers. You need to start thanking God for come everything on. that is happening in your life, everything that is going to happen in your life. And so right now we declare right now as we walk around this room, God, we declare your goodness in every person's life. We declare no more sickness, no more disease, no more tiredness, God, that you would fill every person that is going through something right now, God. We declare that the Spirit of God would fill them right now where they are, Lord, because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come on. And we thank you, God. We declare that in Jesus' name. All right. There is a Stella Morel, M-O-R-I-E-L, Stella, Stella, Stella. This is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. He said, I'm making you bubbly, and this is the season that I shake you up. This is not a shaking unto despair or sorrow. This is a shaking that will cause you to fountain and come forth. God says, even when a champion wins an event, they pop open the cork, and that in which was stirred up bubbles forth. God says, Stella, I am bubbling you forth in this hour. I'm going to cause the Lord to, to rise up and come forth through you and people are going to see the great victory that I have given you. This is an appointed time where you will see the goodness of God begin to make a way. Stella, this is your season of victory. It's your appointed time to come forth in a new way. The Lord says, darkness has passed. Light has come. A new day is shining. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice says the Spirit of the Lord. There's a young lady and she's in a white jacket right here in the second row. Will you come up here? Yeah, you right there in the studio audience. Come, come, come. Yes. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to be here. No, 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 no. I promise you it'll be good. Tell me your name. Hi, Nicole. It's no accident you're here, but divine purpose. And this is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. Have I not put a prophetic call on your life? Have I not filled you with destiny? Do you not dream dreams and fill a thing, sense a thing? And God says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put confidence in your mouth because there is many times that you will hold the thing instead of releasing it. And then you go home and you deal with this feeling in your belly like, Lord, you wanted me to do this. 
And I heard the Lord say, this next season, I am bringing you into a place called radical faith. And by faith, you're going to say, God, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to say it. And when you open them, people will be crying. They will be weeping and they will be set free. God says you have a hand of mercy and a call to glory. God says you're going to lay hands on a people and you're going to break uh, bondages and fetters off of them. But even greater, you're going to have the word of the Lord in your mouth. And when you speak, they're going to be set free. He said, I'm stirring you up on the inside and I'm going to cause your mouth to found the Lord says you're going to become like Jeremiah and there's going to be a fire shut up in your bones and you won't be able to contain it no more unless you speak the word. God says the word of the Lord is going to come out of your mouth and the ways of God are going to be made known unto man. And the, the Lord says as you make my word known unto these people, great salvation and healing will come. Do you not desire to see the harvest? Have you not cried out for revival? Have you not cried out for a move of God even over the midst of your family? The Lord says this is the season in which I'm after the harvest called your family for I've heard your prayers and I've seen your tears and God says I want to answer them with fire a fire that burns off the the restraints that brings them into liberty I see your family with their hands lifted I see them with a smile I see them like sunflowers with their face turned towards God I see them rejoicing the Lord says this next season as you begin to prophesy begin to imagine your family being set free you can't hold it back anymore he says your praise is going to be like that of Paul and Silas in the midst of a prison that causes a shaking and sets people free. He says, surely I am with you and I'm putting a shaking on the inside of you to set up people at liberty. Rejoice, 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 says the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap and a praise. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Boy, she's pretty stoic. She's like, she held in every tear. But I'm telling you, I could feel the goodness of God in this very place. Man, I'm telling you, YouTube, God bless you. Everybody that's jumping on, Maria, uh, gosh, uh, Maria Mercedes Rodas, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. I'm putting a fresh fire on you. I'm putting a fresh fire. Uh, a fresh joy within you. The enemy did everything to steal your joy, but the Lord says he can't because I'm your strength. The Lord says, you know too much to quit now. You've gone too far. But the Lord says today, Maria, I'm putting the keys of the kingdom. He says in your hand, but even greater, I'm putting them in your mouth. The Lord says your tongue is a key. He says you will be known as a life proclaimer. You will be a voice of liberty. You will be, you will be one who declares God things into the midst of hardships and you will see it change. Matter of fact, the scripture that comes to me or the story in scripture that comes to me is when Peter was, was, or when Jesus was asleep and Peter said to Jesus, do you not care that we are perishing? And he wakes him up and Jesus with the key in his mouth says, peace be still. The key of the kingdom gives you the power to lock a thing. It gives you the power to shut it. And I hear the Lord say, when things of negativity come around you, use the key, your mouth and begin to say that door is closed. And when you close that door, every storm, every trouble, every trial it will neuter it will come to naught, and the glory of God will manifest God says and with your mouth you will declare a future and a hope and as you declare it I will establish it for surely I am with you the Lord says close the door and open a new thing he says close the door to negativity and open the door to blessing and watch those with you cross over into a season of blessing this is your season of impartation and radical fire the radical fire of heaven comes upon you in this very moment father I release it into her spirit even now in Jesus mighty name man it is jumping 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 there is a uh, Anush Sila this is what I heard the Spirit of God say the name the word Sila means it's complete as it is in heaven as it is in earth and I heard the Lord say, I'm bringing completion to you. Every area where you are wounded, everywhere that you are broken, everywhere where you are disappointed, I come to end your disappointment. He says, remember when, remember when Christ came to the fig tree and he said these words, let no man eat of it ever again, and he cursed it. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, I'm cursing your disappointment. You won't be able to eat the fruit of it anymore because it won't live. The only thing that will live is my goodness. And the Lord says, get ready to step into it. Get ready to grab hold of it. Get Get ready to eat of it and reap the harvest of it. This is a fruitful season, a season of blessing. He says, as you grab hold of my promise, he says, you will see your season turn and you will see the season change for surely I am with you. It is your season, your blessed time. Declare that the favor of God is upon you and watch my word go forth and prosper you, says the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Man, I feel the goodness of God. I feel him, feel him, feel him, feel him. There is, there is a, a Paul Royball watching on uh, uh, Facebook. Paul, this is what I hear the Spirit of God saying. He says, this is your appointed season to dream. This is your appointed season to have vision come to you in a new way. The Lord says, as vision comes, he says, write it down. As inspiration comes, take note of it. And you will begin to recognize, Paul, what you're writing down has power and authority. What you begin to take note of, you will recognize I'm putting my finger on. And you won't be afraid to say a thing, do a thing, share a thing. Because when you when you recognize what I'm up to, it's going to cause you to do more. The Lord says, you're not one that is put into the earth to sit down. Paul, I've put you on the earth to do something. God says, it's time to open your mouth. It's time to say a thing. It's time to lead or point the way. And as you lead and point the way, those that you point it to, they will find liberty and breakthrough. Paul, I have anointed you. Paul, I have placed my goodness inside of you. Paul, you are my son and you please me well. Let the joy of who I am in your life come forth and watch how I water the people around you and set them at liberty. For surely my goodness and mercy is upon you my presence is with you and as you share what i placed in you those that receive it their ears will tingle their hearts will rejoice and the fruit of the land will come upon them the blessing will manifest to them and through them and they will share it with others for this is the appointed time of breakthrough and blessing rejoice my son for i am with you says the spirit of the sovereign lord hallelujah i'm telling you there is so many things that are happening Matter of fact, right now, why don't you guys just lift up your hands in the audience and those online? Because what is taking place in this very moment is God is bringing his sovereignty, his goodness, his mercy. He's releasing presence. I'm telling you, this is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. He said, I'm bringing peace to your storm. And he says, and I'm ending the chaos and I'm giving you the power to make a decision. There is so many people that are in the place called indecision. But the Lord says, today I give you the power to make a decision. Surrender it unto me, says the Lord, and watch what I do. I heard the Lord say, get ready for expansion. Get ready for breakthrough. For even as the month of October comes, the Lord says, not only will it be a fall season, it will be a spring season. He says, old things will fall, but new things will spring forth. The Lord says, this is... this." This October, it will be a fall and a spring at the same time. He said, everything that is hindered, everything that is weighed against, everything that has stood against you will fall before you. But it will also be your spring. It will be your fountain. It will be the time of blessing. The Lord says, there the land will be plenty. And he says, and the fields will be ripe. For surely I am doing a new thing in the month of October. And I will cause the heart of my people to rejoice. For the world will look at it and say, how could this thing be? And the Lord will declare unto him, it's not a system of the world thing. It's the blessing of the kingdom. But the Lord says, those that are of my kingdom will enter into a season of bliss. They will enter into a season of blessing. He says, in the month of October, he says, it will be a fall season. Things of the world will fail. But it will also be a season of spring for those that are in the kingdom. The blessing of the Lord will spring up and it will flow. And the enemy can't stop it. The Lord says, rejoice for a brand new day has come. Come on, if you believe it, say yes. Put your hands together and begin to rejoice online. Put up emojis and let everybody know your praise. See, something happens when we praise God. When you praise God, when the children of Israel gave a great shout, the walls were no more. I'm here to declare to you, it's the season where the church begins to shout. It's time for your voice to be heard. The day of you being under us is over. The day of silence is no more. The Lord says it's the time that the house of God come out of the silence of the Lamb and become a word and a voice and become a force. God says for those that will lift up their voice in this season, the force of God, the power of God will go forth on your behalf and it will remove strongholds and bring people into blessing. For surely my hand is upon those who believe and my word is in their mouth and they will declare new things, God things, and it shall manifest. The Lord says, I am surely with you. Do not look back, but look ahead into everything that I promised and it will be so. A brand new day. Can I tell you what I just saw? This is what I saw. I saw things in the political realm start collapsing. I saw things that were hidden 
being made known and I saw it collapse like a house of cards and then what I saw is the house of God rise up and I saw trumpets and voices and I saw eagles gathering I hear the Spirit of the Lord say where the eagles gather there will my body be where the eagles gather there will I be found the Lord says look for the gathering of eagles look for the gathering of prophets look for where there is a company being raised up and there there will be a sound and a trumpet of victory the Lord says I'm doing a new thing and it can't be stopped what I put in motion no one could abort for I have declared it and it is so I am doing a new thing America get ready for there is a sound that's going to come forth that the enemy can no longer stop there is a shout that will come from my people that will set the shackles free there is a sound that is already being released that is shaking the foundations of the earth and the whole world shall know that I am with you for the day of the Lord is at hand and the time a blessing is now you watch and see says the Lord I'll do a new thing in October I'll do a new thing in America I'll do a new thing in the nations of the world and the Lord says and the enemy can't stop it he who laughs first does not laugh last I have the last laugh the Lord says the joy of the Lord is strength I'm releasing a strength into my people into my countries and into the nations they shall rise up and be the strong rejoice for this day I declare you are the strong come on if you believe that say yes Hallelujah. Jesus is here. His presence is here. His mercy is here. The hand of God is upon us. Oh, I'm telling you. All you got to do is just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. When God roars from Zion, it's because he's making known his mysteries. He wants to make known mysteries. I know he reveals mysteries through his servants, the prophets. Did you know that a prophet lives inside of you? His name is Jesus. Everybody looks and says, I need a word, prophet. I need a word. Can I tell you that Jesus lives on the inside of you? This is the season to let the Christ rise up and speak a thing. There's somebody that's waking up in the midnight hours and you're praying to go to sleep. But before you go to bed, you pray, speak to me. And you're expecting to have a dream, but God says, I'm waking you up. I'm waking you up. I'm waking you up because I want to speak to you. I want to speak to you as my friend face under face like I did Moses. I want to bring you into a sovereign place where you experience my love and my mercy. The Lord says, my eyes are fond upon you. I have cast them upon you. Can't you feel my loving touch? Can't you feel my breath? It's wooing you. Will you not answer the call? The Lord says, throw off your blanket. Come out of your comfortable place and move into an atmosphere where I can speak to you. The Lord says, come not empty handed. Come with your hand raised in your heart bowed come with a pen and a heart ready to write and I will scribe to you the words and the mysteries of heaven that will minister to your family to your loved ones and to those that are in need around you I will change your workplace and I will change the spaces around you I am the God that makes the way and no one can stop it I want to speak a word unto you with passion and love that will cause everything around you to be transformed the Lord says the day of feeling condemned is over the day of judgment is not before you it's behind you the Lord says your house is worthy of being filled and I will fill it with joy and good news I will remove sorrows and despairs and what I'll do is release bliss and blessing this is the appointed time says the Lord of the blessing of the Lord when a man dwells in bliss he's happy beyond and the Lord says that's what I long to do I long to bring you into that secret place that gives you a joy that is unspeakable a joy that the world can't understand a joy that says you've been touched by the favor of God the Lord says today enter into this secret place enter into these chambers and watch what I'll do for you can you hear me calling can you feel the tug just embrace it and answer it and in that place your life will be changed for I send my mercy I send my healing I send my deliverance and I send to you my promise my promise is found in the secret place and I invite you come and receive of me and let your cup runneth over that you might pour out blessing unto those that are around you for I am with you, says the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. My God, I don't know how, how, how could we hear something like that and not want to enter into prayer? How could we hear something like that and not say, God, I long to be in your presence. 
Can I tell you what God's longing for? He's longing for a man that will build an altar and find himself at rest there. When God created the altar, he created it when he what? When he created man. The word altar means anything that has been made a wreck. Can I tell you the first place where an altar is seen, but it's not described as an altar is when God took the dust of the earth and created man. There he blew into him and made him a living being. Don't you remember when Adam fell, God had an appointment with him that day and he said, Adam! Where are you? Meaning they had a scheduled meeting. Can I tell you that there's someone here that is listening. You've been missing your scheduled meeting with God. You were missing your personal devotions. You're not going to church like you should on the regular in your life. You're in and out, hit and miss. And I hear the Lord saying, I call you and I welcome you. I don't invite you to the altar to scold you. I invite you there to impart and to bless. He said, I woo you to the altar because there I can fill your life. There I can heal your heart. There I can fill you with my mercies. And from there, you can change the world. The Lord says, I'm looking for someone that's not afraid to change the world. I'm looking for someone that's not ashamed to open their mouth. I'm looking for someone that would passionately proclaim my name. Someone that's not ashamed nor embarrassed, but full of love that they would let my love flourish and flow through them. The Lord says, it is you, it is you, it is you. It's those online and those in the studio. God says, it's you. I'm anointing you. I will make you a Kairos people. You will be the carriers of the suddenly and where you go, lives and a people will be suddenly and supernaturally healed. The day of a people waiting for a Kairos moment has come to an end because I released you as a Kairos people, a people that carry signs, one miracles and glory and touch my people around you and see them healed and delivered and set free for surely I have anointed you come to the altar come to that secret place with me and let me feel you heal you and use you for my glory for this is an appointed time of worship I hear the Lord saying get ready because there is going to be someone that will call and say will you join me for midnight worship and it would be easy to say no but the Lord says when you get the call say yes and watch what happens for even as I shook the prisons in the day and the hour of Paul I will shake it again and prison doors will be made open and people will be set at at freedom and liberty it will be like the midnight cry that took place in Egypt where I told Moses when I when the cry goes out in the land don't leave empty-handed ask and the people of Egypt will give unto you the Lord says this is your appointed season for the midnight cry is about to be answered I'm about to fill your hand with blessing and Pharaoh is about to give it to you I will not allow the enemy to hold on to its wealth for I will give it to the righteous for the Lord says this is the appointed time where the righteous will flourish this is the appointed time where the blessed of the Lord will say so and the world will look in awe saying how could it be for it's about to be an end time transfer it's about to be a new season the Lord says watch again have I not said unto you that October 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 it will be a fall season for the system of the world but it will be a season springing forth for my body and my people. Come on, if you believe it, say yes. Ah, I feel the fire of God. I feel the fire of God. And all he wants to do is bless his people, touch his people, heal his people, use his people. My question is, are you his people? <laughs> right here. This is your moment. Maybe you're online and you're far from God. Maybe you're in the house and you're like, I don't know the Lord that way. Can I tell you right now, you might feel like you walked a thousand steps away, but the Lord followed you. See, we have this misconception that when I'm sin, God separates. When you study the word sin, it means to miss the mark. The word mark means to mix the bullseye. Can I tell you when you miss the bullseye, it means you come out of character. Can I tell you that all you need is a touch from God and he'll realign your character. He'll bring that uh, adjustment. He'll put something or someone in place. And can I tell you, he has the power to remove the nature of Adam and awaken the spirit of Christ to bring you into divine alignment where the great blessing flows. And so maybe you feel far and distant from God, but this is your moment. If you're here and you don't know him, if you're online and you feel far from him, I want to invite you to say this prayer. I want to invite you to welcome the Christ 
into your life. And I know some of you think, I need to welcome him again. No, you just need to acknowledge him. Because if you're saved, he's with you. All you got to do is turn towards him. He's never took his eyes off of you. His eyes are upon you. I know some people think he's mad. He's mad at me, prophet. No, he's not. He's madly in love with you. That's the only mad he is. He's passionately, fervently in love with you. Let this love set you free. I'm telling you right now, begin to pray for your family. Because I see brothers and sisters being reunited. I see mothers and fathers and sons and daughters turning face to face and hearts coming into alignment. I'm seeing broken families bridging the gap and suddenly being healed. I see men that have built up walls, letting God remove the layers and build a bridge. I see women that said I could never trust again with their arms open and their eyes weeping. I'm seeing a people that are broken saying I'm tired of being broken and with a hand stretched out, the Lord is not grabbing your hand, he's lifting you up as a whole. And I hear the Lord say in a prayer, in a moment, he said I set you at liberty. And so, Father, I just declare over those that are online that have felt far, separated, and distant, this is their hour of healing. I heard the Lord says, my affection is towards you. Turn your eyes towards me and see my eyes. They're full of fire, not a fire of wrath, not a fire to destroy, but a fire of love. It's a passionate love. I'm looking at you intently and I'm looking at you with love. And the Lord says, perfect love cast down all fear. I break the fear that rebellion has set in your heart. And I say to you, my love comes. Receive it. Rejoice and be set at liberty. For surely this love comes to burn out iniquity and destroy fear. But it comes to passionately remind you how much I love you. I release my love into your heart. I'm telling you, if you would just stretch out your arms like this, you would feel his embrace. As you stretch out your arms in the audience as well as online, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, my breath comes and my arms squeeze, and I say, I receive. And I see the Lord squeezing this nation, this world, and his people in it. I see him squeezing it. And I heard him say, get ready. For new dreams will arise because you're mine. New dreams will come forth because you are mine. And what I have sovereignly set free, no one can refute. My love sets you free this day, says the Spirit of the Lord. Come on. Why don't we give God a hand clap and a praise? Let's just rejoice in this great love. My God, how time moves so quickly. Brother Manny, I know, come right here. I know that this was a stretching environment. But I want to let you know you flourished. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, I want to remove tension from you. He says, you're carrying a stress, not just outwardly, but inwardly. And the Lord says, I want you to look upon this season and remind yourself, have I ever failed you? He says, though it may look hard, it may seem difficult, the blessing of the Lord is there. I'm going to finance not only Uganda, but I am going to finance Pakistan or India. I'm going to finance the nations. For I've heard your cry, and you said, Lord, send me. I'll go to the window. The Lord says today, you got to understand what the word window means. It means to look through to see into the future. The Lord says Samson's name means window. And Samson is an Old Testament picture of how I would perish on the cross. For if you look through Samson, the last words he said is, remember me, and he pushed with all of his might. He was a looking glass and a picture of the Christ that was crushed by the weight of sin, but yet he was a look into the future. God says, son, I want you to look with your eyes closed. I want you to see what the nations that you're going to, what they're going to be impact, what the impact is going to look like. Not only will they be clothed and fed, they'll be healed and delivered. He says, and countless numbers of bodies will be healed and multiple uh, thousands of 
salvations will take place when I send you. The Lord says, do you not think it weird as you entered back into this covenant and as you said yes to the Lord that there would be no warfare? For the enemy thought he won when he when he said that you put yourself on the shelf and you took a time away, he thought he defeated you. But now that you're back in the game and you're moving forward, he says you were like a checker that got jumped early, but now I put you crown side up. But the Lord says the enemy thinks we're playing checker, but I'm playing chess. I'm about to move you. You are a king and you're about to go into the places and spaces and take dominion and speak a word. And as you speak a word, the lives of the people will be changed. I'm opening your eyes and I'm rotting in your vision the Lord says have I not put people before you with 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 the means to help take care of it in a moment and you're trying to bring all these streams together to see it piece together the Lord says dream bigger for this is a season of expansion this is a season of blessing he said lay yourself before the altar and dream put your heart out there and say I believe and watch what I'll do for if I've not failed you once why would I begin now it is not so he said I'm the God of more than enough I own all the silver and all the cattle on all the hills and I shall provide everything that is needed and I shall cause your cup to run it over. This is a day of blessing. This is a day of impartation. This is a day of awakening. Your dreams expand. This day says the Spirit of God. I'm telling you right now, there are some people that have hearts for the nations. This man is going. Myself, Apostle Rudy, we're all getting ready to go into different places and spaces all over the world to preach the gospel. This is a perfect time to sow into the atmosphere and say, I want to make a difference. God said by October, there is going to be what? There is going to be a supernatural release. It was going to be fall for the world system, but it was going to be spring for the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, if you believe that word, why don't you go right now to www.prophetrobsanchez.com and sow a seed. If you can't do that why don't you hit the stars and send stars i'm telling you let's finance the kingdom let's finance the move of god let's sow into the atmosphere of what god has declared do you realize that god gave you at least eight weeks ahead of what to begin to look for can i tell you that's what prophets do they speak what god is revealing in the future and they bring it into the now can i tell you when you sow into a prophetic word you're sowing into the future so when that day and that hour comes your harvest is there that That's how powerful sowing in the spirit is. So I want to challenge you. Go to our text to give 209-395-1515 and sow a seed. Don't hold back. Be generous. Oh, the day of us asking for $5, $10, that's over because we can't finance the kingdom on $5. We can't touch the world on $5. Yes, if a thousand people gave five, it's going to make an impact. But can I tell you today that there's some of you that could give a thousand dollars or more and not even blink. There's some of you that could give uh, $10,000 and it not even affects you. But can I tell you, whatever God puts in your heart, if you would sow it in faith, you would see miracles happen. Can I tell you today that the whole reason we have a studio, the whole reason why we have a staff is because I would believe it. I'm telling you, there is a time where my wife announced from this very pulpit that she didn't like the studio because in her mind it was what taking money taking money taking money but suddenly God began to build it out for a day that we didn't know was coming COVID-19 when it hit all churches were shut down but guess what this studio was open God had us ahead of the curve why because he said he had a plan for us can I tell you we're walking in the divine plan of God now God has opened the door and we just purchased a building that that sits, that's about 7,000 square feet. We're building it out. We need help. We can't build it alone. And if everyone partnered together, can I tell you what we could do? We could change the world. The world will come and people will be raised up in the prophetic. They'll be raised up in healing and deliverance. They'll be raised up in the song of the Lord. They'll be raised up in worship. They will be raised up, trained, equipped, and sent out carrying fire. Ah, uh, who am I speaking to? There's some that are saying, I gotta move. Yes, don't be afraid. My remember the days where I travel six and seven hours to go sit in a meeting just so my spirit could be blessed and edified. Matter of fact, I did it this last weekend. I drove all the way to Southern California, not to preach, but to be fed, to be blessed by an atmosphere. I'm so thankful that there's still prophets and apostles and ministers of the gospel, those that will proclaim truth, that when you get in that presence, that environment, it sets you free. Can I tell you what prophetic people do? They they create environments Ah, so you could sow into it. So when the rain comes and the seed is planted, 
you step into harvest. Go to the website, www.prophetrobsanchez.com. Go to our text to give. It's on the screen, 209-395-1515. There's one, one last way you can help us. Choose, choose to become an LIVG World Changers partner. That's when you sow that recurring seed. That's when you say, I partner. I'm not just sowing. I'm partnering with everything that God announced because it resonates in me. When you partner with God, can I tell you what you're saying? I believe you at your word. When you believe God at his word, what you're saying is, I want to see that in which I saw here be released to a world so a world can be transformed. Maybe you don't want to go to the world. I do. Send me. He does. Send him. We do. Send us. Because when you send us, we carry your seed. And we plant it. And there you will reap your harvest. If you don't go and you send us, every soul that's touched is, is touched because your influence, your fingerprints on it, help us change the world. Let's touch the world together. We are, like the shirt I wore last week, better together. I'm wearing a shirt right now. You can zoom in on it. It's called Fierce Love. That's the love of God. It's fierce. It's mighty. It's passionate. It's powerful. Can I tell you, his love sets people free. So go right now. Sow into the atmosphere. If you're here in studio, all you have to do is fill out the envelope that's on a chair. Thousand is spelled T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D. I know people laugh. But you know what? There's sometimes people need to hear it. Because the day of me believing for little is over. I can't change the world believing for little. God challenged me this morning to believe for much. So we're believing for much. Because you know what? Everybody in this studio is praying and believing for a mighty move of God. And so I'm thankful for every single one of the people that operate our cameras, the switchers, those that operate Pro Presenter, those that come hours before this service takes place to just pray and believe. I'm telling you, there's so many things taking place. I want to announce to you, starting September, no, August the 25th, that's next Thursday. We're going to be live from Hesperia. Revival in the desert. There is an outpouring. There is a gathering of eagles. Thursday, we will have what the heavens are saying in Hesperia. Grace Awakenings. If you are in Southern California, San Diego, if you are anywhere where you are willing to drive to get there, get there. I guarantee you it will be worth it. Matter of fact, we're going to have a Friday night and then... We are having a men's meeting Saturday morning, 10 a.m. The blessing of the Lord is going to be there. It's going to be a gathering of young roaring lions. The eagles, the prophets are all coming together. God is going to prophesy to the men. He's going to minister. I'm telling you, I have already asked about four other prophetic ministers to come. Three have confirmed. I'm waiting on one more, and we're going to prophesy. Our heart is to pour out. Yes, there'll be a message, but after the message, the word of the Lord will come. So if you are a man and you want, if you're a wife, send your husband, send your son, send them, and tell them, don't come alone. Bring someone with them that the word of the Lord might come. I'm telling you, revival in the desert the 25th through the 28th of this month starting next Thursday be there and watch lives be changed I'm telling you there's something that is happening that is so mighty in this hour and we are so grateful we are so thankful matter of fact for those of you if you've seen or been on our socials we just are promoting our new book discovering and releasing your prophetic voice we're doing a brand new campaign because God spoke to me and he said these words Rob if you would give this book away for the price of shipping, he said, we'll change the world together. So you could go to ProfitRobBook.com and you can sign up to get your book for the cost of shipping. That little investment can change your life. I had someone today by the name of Artie. Artie picked up my book. He was looking for something else, was drawn to it. And he said he picked it up, couldn't put it down. He read it all day long because it ministered to him. And he said it was so authentic, so pure, and he's been writing back and forth, and we've been having this small conversation. And he said, if I would have found it uh, another way, I would have done it, but I'm so thankful for God putting this before me. I want to challenge you. If you've already bought the book, it's okay. Buy it and send it to somebody else for the price of shipping. It's cheaper than even getting it on Amazon. 
I'm telling you, it's the cheapest way to get it. Just pay the shipping. It is worth it. It'll change your life or the life of someone else. Can I tell you what it'll do? It will make you prophesy. The very thing that I'm doing, you can do it in your capacity, your measure. So I just personally want to let you know we love you. We appreciate you. And so guess what? We're going to go ahead and get ready. Do you have any more words? You're good? You got a word? Ah, oh, well, come up here. This is, this is how we flow. Expect the unexpected in a prophetic meeting. I grew up with a guy named Manuel Borja. He was Balmanian. Really? In San Jose? Off of Durant Avenue? South San Jose? I know you, brother. I know your dad. That's, wow. Well, listen, in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24, the Bible says, the, the, the ant prepared Come on. in the summer for the winter. And then the rock badger uh, hid himself in the rock. And the locust advanced without a king. And the spider was in the, uh, in the, in the king's palace and did everything with his hands. I want to let you know that God, God is saying this. If you believe for the next season in your life and you're praying for it, your preparation has to have started last season. Because what you prepare for this season will come in a few seasons. The Lord says the preparation of your heart and the preparation of things in the realm of the spirit are going to begin to excel and they're going to begin to, to be elevated and you're going to begin to sense that, man, i got to really begin to get going. Because the pace you're going, the Lord says, it's got to be increased. I'm going to cause uh, the preparation of your heart for what you're praying for to begin to accelerate. For there's an acceleration of things in your heart. But the Lord says there's got to be another level of preparation and the spirit of the Lord says everything you have is already on the inside of you just like the spider when someone would tear down its uh, web it would build it right back because it was on the inside of you her so the Lord says yes you sit in the king's palace and what you need is already on the inside of Come you on. but prepare yourself to receive prepare yourself to to go be, be launched forward prepare yourself to come to another level it won't happen son without preparation for the Lord says put your feet and and make your mark in this ground. For the Lord says, I will cause you to take your shoe off in foreign soils and put your foot down and leave a mark in those territories. But if you don't mark this territory, you'll never get to those territories. Says the Spirit of grace, it is your season for divine preparation. Hide yourself like the cronies in the rock and get ready because do you realize that a locust doesn't fly? It springs and it moves with the wind. Get ready because your jump, yeah, yeah, your leap of faith is going to be quantum in this season. Come so on. the Lord says, I tell you, prepare, hide yourself in the rock, get ready to spring forward because everything you need is on the inside of you in this next season, says the Spirit of Grace. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, Prophet Rob. Man, I'm telling you, God is so amazing. I know there's people going, don't end, don't end, don't end. And so what I'll do, I don't know, Brother Jeffrey, this young man last week got zonked. He was anointed, released as a prophetic voice. I don't know if he has a word, but I'd, I'd just check with him. Come up here. You can grab that mic. And see, I'm telling you, we're just doing things different. The day of just church is over. I am called to be a sound and an expression. I'm called to raise up, train, and equip prophetic voices and so, and I'm also one that's not afraid to champion. I am so thankful for Manny and Linnea. I thank you for their fierce love ministry. And I want to help raise them to another level. They work with me. I work with them. Together, we're working to change the world. That's our passion. There's no competition. There's nothing else but the releasing of the presence of God. Come on, prophet. Amen. Amen. Anything and everything can happen in the presence of God. So I'm so excited. I just came to receive wanted to meet this brother and I uh, heard great things about you and the call of God on your life. And so it's funny when um, this young lady started playing on the keys, I actually feel like you just have this, but the Lord wants to just release you into prophetic worship, into a greater realm. And it's funny because I feel the Lord saying that it's time to really release your heart. You've guarded your heart, and even in the matters of love, you've guarded your heart because you once were hurt, and you've like, Lord, I don't know if I can love to the full capacity that you've called me to love. 
Well, I feel like the Lord has done a deep work in you, and it's your season to step out by faith. Just even as he got a word about this next season of stepping out, I feel like it's a word for you as well. And that's what happens when you're in covenant. And it's funny that prophet said, or that you said that this is my girlfriend, because when I saw the way that she looked at you, I felt like, I was like, man, they better be dating. (laughs) I was like, they better be engaged. I don't know what's happening, but I just feel like that you can just trust this man with your heart, that you can trust him with your heart. And uh, yeah, just keep going on that. I just feel like uh, get ready, get the ring. (laughs) It's ordained. So one other word, praise God. I don't mean to put all your stuff out there. I just feel like God is doing something significant that she really just... Yeah, put a ring on it. Come on. You know, I'll just release our testimony. You know, I got married in nine months, and our good friend uh, Carlos, I think it was eight weeks he got married. So yes. anything and everything can happen in the work, in the presence of God if you need someone to marry. <laughs> I had a word for this young lady right here, too. I don't know. You can come up real quick. We'll do it quick. Right here. Yeah, come on up. Hallelujah. We got to move quick in the presence of God. <laughs> if you don't see how Prophet Rob moves, it's like you're on the freeway, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm going he's 90. He's going quick. He's going 95. I just felt like, I don't know if you play uh, any instruments. Uh, I don't know if you play guitar or, or what. But I just see you just as this influencer. And God has given you just uh, uh, favor in realms, even in social media. And I just feel like God is just calling you a kingdom influencer. And so, Lord, I thank you for the favor on her life. The favor on her life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just even seeing, like, I saw that your curly hair, it was kind of highlighted to me. The Holy Spirit highlighted your cur- curly hair. And you remind me of uh, even, like, Tori Kelly. And I just feel like, uh, not that you are in similar ways of her, but I just felt like, What she does is she brings the kingdom to people that would never receive the kingdom message. And I feel like that's the call on your life. To people that might not receive the normal uh, gospel message, uh, you present it in a way that is receivable. I just feel like you're the bridge from the church to the world. You have an evangelistic call on your life. So, Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in her life. Use her. Use her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. There is one last person that I got to minister to. Your name is Theophilus. Theophilus, which means love. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, you loved everything that's taking place, and I love you in the same manner. The Lord says, what I've done unto one, I've done it unto many. But Theophilus, I'm doing it for you. I am sending my love, love that will build you up, love that will encourage you. For this is not a season of despair nor sorrow. It's not a season where disappointment can reside. It's a season where love makes all things well. My love comes to you, and I lift you up. It's a day of killing. It's a day of rejoicing. Let that in which was celebrated in an atmosphere be your celebration. For all that I have spoken that witness and minister to you, I give it to you because I love you. The Lord says, receive my love and be at peace. That's my promise to you, says the Spirit of God. Come on, put your hands together one last time. Well, we here at LIBG Ministries, we have a simple saying. Go to our website. No, that's not what it is. Our simple saying is, no matter how difficult or troublesome life can be, never changes the fact that life is very good. We'll see you next week. God bless.